1st of May. That month went quickly, didn't it? Um, it's time for a new composer of the month. Do you remember? That, that seems so long ago. Do you remember at the beginning of April, we had a composer of the month and I bet you can remember who it was. Can you remember? John? John Williams, that's right. John Williams was famous, well he is famous because he's still composing now. He's what's called a living composer. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he's, he composes music for fantastic films. Jaws, um, Jaws, Harry Potter, all those sort of exciting films. So that was, uh, that was John Williams. But we need a new composer because it's a new month. So, May, composer of the month. Who is it going to be? Well, I was playing that piece of music because it was written by this month's composer of the month. But that's quite a hard clue. An easy clue, and I know you're going to get it straight away, is when I tell you that this composer went deaf. Poor man, he went deaf at the age of 30. And what a dreadful thing to happen for a musician. He was, first of all, a pianist. But then when his hearing went, he was doing concerts and playing all the wrong notes. So he couldn't carry on doing that. Now, I know you will know who this is. We've mentioned him many times. Ludwig van Beethoven. He was born in Bonn in Germany 250 years ago. And things were very different then. <clears throat> Nowadays, if somebody had trouble with their hearing, our marvellous NHS would be there to do lots of tests, provide hearing aids, and of course we could do signing. We've lots of things now, but for both poor Beethoven, there just wasn't anything. A friend of his tried to help and he made him this huge metal ear trumpet and he held it to his ear and people shouted down the ear trumpet, but he must have had a really miserable time. And that's reflected a lot in his music. It can be very bold and sad sometimes and very angry and energetic. Poor Beethoven. That was a bit awful for him. So let's have a look at Beethoven, born 250 years ago in Bonn in Germany. Um, I've made a list of some music that I think you would probably really like to listen to. I put watch, but it's really watch and listen, isn't it? So BBC, there's a fantastic series called BBC 10 Pieces. And there's a piece on Beethoven, and it's Beethoven's Symphony Number no. 5. Really, really famous. As soon as it starts playing, you will recognise it. It goes, da 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 or something like that. And then there's a, an American site called Classics for Kids. It's really very good. You'll find out lots about Beethoven there. And then I found a funny clip on YouTube this morning, Composers for Kids, and in brackets, Beethoven. It was, it was very hilarious, but worth watching. So those are ideas for you to listen to some Beethoven music. You have actually listened <coughs> to some Beethoven music before. Here's a piece called The Moonlight Sonata. Now, I have a book that I love to read to children. It's my favourite book. I wonder if you can remember what it is. It's called... The Bear and the Piano. I don't let anyone read it, but it's my book. So when I read this to you at school, which I've done a few times, I think, we then can listen. And I don't know why, it just the music matches up with the story. Well, I think it does anyway. Um, and we listen to um, Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata while I am reading this story. So you can either whiz off and do something else, or you can listen to The Bear and the Piano again. OK, but keep looking out, keep finding out about our composer of the month, Ludwig von Beethoven, a German composer. And he was born 250 years ago. Wow. Wow, that's a long time. So here we go. Let's put the music on. Number four. Whoops, that was the volume, not the number. Here we go. No. So are you ready? Are you sitting comfortably? I know you like to look at the pictures, so I'll show you the pictures as well. One day, oh, I have to put my glasses on. One day in the forest, a young bear cub found something he'd never seen before. What could this strange thing be, he thought. 
Shyly, he touched it with his stubby paws. Plonk. The strange thing made an awful noise. So the bear left, but the next day he came back, and the day after that too, and for days and weeks and months and years, until eventually. The sounds that came from the strange thing were beautiful, and the bear had grown big and strong and grisly. When the bear played, he felt so happy. The sound took him away from the forest, and he dreamed of strange and wonderful lands. It wasn't long before the other bears in the forest were drawn to the clearing. Every night a crowd gathered to listen to the magical melodies coming from the bear and the strange thing. Then one night a girl and her father came across the clearing they told the bear that the strange thing was a piano and the sounds it made were music. Come to the city with us, they said. There is lots of music there. You can play, you can play grand pianos in front of hundreds of people and hear sounds so beautiful they will make your fur stand on end. The bear knew that if he left the, for if he left the forest, the other bears would miss him very much. But he longed to explore the world beyond the woods, to hear more wonderful music and play better than ever before. And before long, the bear's name was up in big bright lights in the big bright city. He played sold out concerts in giant theatres. Every night he performed with such passion and such grace to wild applause and standing ovations and huge admiration. The bear recorded albums that went platinum. He was interviewed for magazines. He won awards. He met new people every day and created headlines wherever he went. The city was everything he had hoped it would be, but deep down something tugged at the bear's heart. He had fame and awards and all the music in the world, but he missed the forest. He missed his old friends. He missed his home. So the bear decided to go back. He speedily crossed the river and excitedly bounded into the forest he couldn't wait to tell his friends about his time in the city. But when the bear reached the familiar clearing, it was empty. No piano, no bears, no anything. The bear started to worry that his friends had forgotten him or that they were angry that he had left them behind. Then a friend stepped into the clearing. Hello, cried the bear, I'm back. I've missed you so much. Without saying a word, the grey bear ran back into the forest. Wait, called the bear. I'm so sorry I left, please stop. But his friend just kept running. The bear stumbled after him, moving deeper and deeper into the forest until he saw something that made his fur stand on end for the bear had not been forgotten his friends were angry but proud the bear realized that no matter where he went or what he did they would always be there watching from afar they had even kept the piano safe in the shade for his safe return So after the bear had told his friends about his life in the city and the many concerts he had played, he sat down to play once more, this time for the most important audience of all. 
And you know who the most important audience of all is? That was his friends. So, ooh, oops a daisy. So that was the story of the bear and the piano. And we, the music playing was Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. So that's our musician, that's our composer of the month for May. So listen to all you can. Send me some messages. Tell me what you've listened to. Ludwig van Beethoven. Okay. Lovely to see you. Happy May. I was thinking about May today. When I was a little girl, that's a long time ago, isn't it? When I was a little girl, we used to have, um, in my infant school, because I went to an infant school before junior school, and we used to have um, a May Day celebration. And we would do, there'd be a big pole in the middle of the playground with ribbons on it, and children would hold the ribbons and dance around the maypole. It was so fun. It was really exciting. And then in the afternoon, we would have our May Day parade. And everyone would take their bicycles or scooters and some girls would take their dolls' prams. And they decorated the ball, usually with crepe paper and made them really beautiful. And we used to go and set off around the streets of our infant school. It was our, called our May Day Parade. It was really great. And, oh, that's annoying. and I think I've got some photographs of it somewhere. I'll see if I can dig them out. So happy May Day. Have a great May and hopefully see you soon. Bye.